Canadized jewelry. We're going to talk about all those wonderful colors you can get and all those different colors. We're going to give you the pros, the cons, the advantages, disadvantages, give you five of each, and talk a little bit about the history and background, all that fun stuff coming up next here on Pros and Cons by a Piercer, episode number 41 of season two. So you might want to stick around. are new to the channel welcome to the channel hope you're enjoying the videos but you might not know who this uh, handsome feller is my name is Davo. i'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994 i own and i operate the axiom body piercing studio located right here in des moines iowa inside skin kitchen tattoo what we're going to talk about today is anodized jewelry we're going to talk about the pros and the cons of that uh for those who don't know what anodizing is or what that is uh, you've probably seen body piercing jewelry that comes in various different cor- colors like uh, bronze, greens, blues, purples, pinks, etc. Uh, the way they get that is you take it, for solid colors anyway, put it in a, uh, a dish or a bath. You apply different voltages to or current to the uh, jewelry, creating a circuit. And it oxidizes the surface and changes how the light reflects. So you get all these wonderful different colors. There's also the method of brushing where you can get multiple different patterns like leopard spotting, uh, polka dots, uh, oil slicks, rainbows, all kinds of stuff. So there's a lot of different combinations. Now, uh, anodizing as far as the history it dates back to the 1920s, was originally used to uh, cut down the amount of corrosiveness aluminum experienced in seaplanes. Uh, basically, it's an entirely different method they use to anodize it other than applying current to it or voltage. But for the most part, that's where it all started. As far as jewelry, uh, I'm sh- I, I know I remember seeing niobium rings and titanium rings prior to the body piercing thing or when I got into it. I was a pretty much a standard by the time I came around. So I'm going to guess it really started to become a thing in the late 80s, especially when people started using niobium and titanium as a substitute for implant grade steel because it's more body friendly. I uh, Lots of the uh, early pieces were uh, from what I know, uh, gauntlet ones, like we're talking, you know, the the golden age of piercing. Most of that stuff was supplied by companies like Good Art, uh, which I greatly miss, and Anatometal. Uh, they made a majority of their titanium and niobium jewelry. Uh, at least that's what I was always told. Well, with that brief history lesson out of the way, let's move on to the pros, the advantages, the things that make you go, yay, I want it. Starting with number one, there are a lot of different colors and color combinations that you can you, you can get with anodizing. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there's about, you know, roughly, uh, you can do everything from light to dark to blues, greens, etc. cetera. Uh, there's roughly about 20-ish solid colors, and then even that, you can kind of change the voltage between to kind of build on... Uh, different uh, shades of that particular color. If you'd like to watch a video of uh, me actually anodizing and talking about some of the more technical side of it, I'll try to leave a card up here or up here. I never can remember. I That will reference to that video that I did on Body Piercing Basics where basically I just went through the whole process and talked about it and have some footage there of the jewelry slowly changing color. It's kind of neat. It's like alchemy. Number two. There is no dye, paint, or plating involved with this. You, What you have is what you get. It's just an oxidized surface. We're not adding to the material. Number three, is safe to be used in a fresh piercing. The one exception to this that I would say would be black or charcoal niobium. I, it's... It's not really black. It's more charcoal colored or like a dark gray. It tends to, because they have to apply so much electricity to it, it tends to create kind of a rough surface. So I wouldn't advise putting that in a fresh piercing because it may cause issues. Number four, 
Technically, you're creating another layer on top of that finish so it can actually decrease the amount or possibility of corrosion. Now, with most body piercing jewelry, if it's of high quality, um, well manufactured, the chances of corrosion are very, very slim. But, you know, it's a little added thing, a bonus, so to speak. And number five, you can re anodize it. If that jewelry, and I'm going to talk about this when we get into cons, starts, that color starts to fade, you can always re anodize it back to that color. Before we move on to the cons, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of this, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so that you're notified every single time we post something. Also, if you have a question or something to add, always comment. I try to check them when I can and answer when I can. So now let's move on to the cons and disadvantages of things that make you go, eh, no thanks. Number one, the anodized, the anodized oxidized surface that makes that color can fade over time. Uh, this is especially predominant in areas of the body where it comes in contact with bodily fluids or is rubbed or has a lot of contact with clothing and et cetera. Uh, that oxidized surface will slowly kind of just wear off. As I mentioned earlier, they can be re-anodized, but, you know, it will lose its color over time. Number two, you can only do this with titanium or niobium. Uh, you can do it with aluminum and various different other metals, but when we're talking about body piercing, that's the two metals that you should buy if you're going to buy anodized jewelry. Nothing else. Number three, the big, the big one that everybody kind of doesn't like. You can't get red and you can't get black. As I mentioned already, you can do kind of a shade of, of niobium that's darker. It's not going to be black like this T-shirt. It's not going to be black like, uh, you know, I, liquid latex or latex, black latex. It's not going to have that look that everybody wants. Um, anytime you come across this, what it is is actually some type of coating. Uh, there is no such thing as black titanium, anodized titanium. It is a coating of some sort. I have seen everything that seems like it's almost like rubber, like a slick rubber coating to something that feels kind of like Teflon. In both of those cases, I'd be a little leery because I can't seem to get a solid answer on what exactly they're coating it with. Number four, there are a lot of less reputable jewelry suppliers, piercing studios, and manufacturers that sell anodized jewelry. That is actually plated or uh, with a cheaper material underneath it. For example, if you ever came across, let's say, something called anodized surgical stainless steel, what that is is a thin layer of titanium possibly on top of stainless surgical steel, and then they, add, they anodize that outer layer of titanium, and then you get a different color. My experience with this stuff, having clients come in that have bought it places and, and et cetera, is that plating just wears off almost immediately. Uh, it's not worth the money. And if you have any metal allergies, it's not going to give you any protection from nickel. Number five, removing that oxidation. If you want to start over again, you want to go right back down to that high polish, it may end up damaging the finish because it's going to have to involve removing that oxidized surface um, with uh, usually some type of abrasion. So there is a possibility of ruining the finish of a piece of jewelry if they take it all the way back down to high polish. So that's a risk that you take when you do that. Before we continue, or I continue, if you like merch, you like swag, you like t-shirts, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. Now let's talk about things you should look for when purchasing anodized jewelry. First off, and it's kind of a pounding that in into your head, it should be solid titanium or niobium. Not filled, not plated. Uh, it should not have anything else listed. Also, it should be third-party certified biocompatible materials, meaning that uh, if you ask them, they should be able to present or at least get you in contact with somebody that can present a meal certificate that actually states it is what it is. Uh, they should not be, as I mentioned earlier, surgical stainless steel or some other material like uh, aluminum. God, that would be terrible. Aluminum? Anyway. Um, it should be from a well-established manufacturer uh, that, you know, verifies their stuff. 
Now, when you're purchasing anodized jewelry, there's kind of two routes that, that you're given. The first one is, is that it's already done at the manufacturer and shipped to whoever's selling it to you, already prepackaged and anodized. The other way is, is a lot of studios, including the Axiom here, uh, we anodize jewelry for you. Now, like I said earlier, if you want to watch that process, check out that video. I'll definitely put the link in the description one way or another. Um, in that case, basically, uh, generally what you'll do is pick out a color. Some of them charge a fee for it. Some of them do it for free, especially if you buy the jewelry from them. And they apply different voltages. And usually they'll come out and go, is that what you wanted? Is that close to what you wanted? And they'd adjust it or tweak it as needed. Now, after they do this, you should probably have the jewelry sterilized. Uh, they should offer this straight ahead. That's the deal. Uh, if you are anodizing and you want to switch colors, because you can't change the color of it, one thing you always want to keep in mind is, is that there is a voltage chart, uh, usually starting around 12 volts and going up to about 20, 22. Uh, you can usually, like let's say you got bronze and you want rose gold. Well, bronze is about anywhere between 12 and 15 rose gold is up there around i believe 85 or right around in there i don't have the chart in front of me and i don't have it memorized memorized i'll admit it uh you can go up to that gold but you can't go from that high voltage downward so it's kind of like there's a point of no return and the only way to get it back all the way and go down to bronze would be to take that rose gold piece and actually remove that oxidized surface. So you should understand that going in, especially if you've invested a lot of money in a piece of jewelry and you, uh, you, you're letting somebody anodize it for you. Now let's talk about living with anodized jewelry. There's really not a lot of care that needs to be done. It, it, nothing really additional to what you would have of any other type of piece. Um, it should wear pretty well. Like I mentioned, uh, it will fade over time. This is contact with just like, you know, cleaning your ears every day or what have you will cause that oxidized surface to come off. Now, one thing you do need to consider is if you're getting a piece of jewelry that's going to go in an area where it's going to have continuous contact with bodily fluids, like, for example, your mouth or a genital piercing where it's going to come in contact with possibly urine and in your mouth, of course, bodily or saliva. I, yeah, not urine there, maybe, but not, not everybody. Anyway, so uh, in those areas, it's going to wear off a lot faster. Uh, you're going to see that fading, and usually when it fades, it fades down to almost a pewter look or almost down to that original high polish look. Um, it doesn't look bad. It's not dangerous. It's not rough or anything. It just kind of goes, it just isn't bright and shiny, uh, colorful. It's still shiny, usually. Now, if that oxidation, oxidized layer does come off, it can be re-anodized, so that's not a huge problem. But you should know that going in, especially if you're buying jewelry for a specific part of the body, that may cause it to wear off pretty quickly. Well, that does it. That's everything I have to say. Till next time, here's hoping you'll your piercing skill with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see for your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Take care and check out one of these other videos.